As I said before, we will see how measurements are made on the diode and the MOSFET transistor. First, let's see where they are placed. Remember that we will find the reactor on the positive side. Also, the fifth diode and the MOSFET transistor will be joining the positive and negative. It will be in parallel. We will do some follow-ups. Over here, we have alternating current. Direct current output. The positive will reach L2. Whenever there is L, there is a coil or an inductance. We go through to L1. These are these two cables. This is where the reactor is placed. Continuing our tour, Notice that here we have the positive, and here we have the negative. This indicates to us on the board that this is the negative pole. And here is where we have the report that will give or the activation, which is given through the microprocessor to be able to activate and produce that bypass short circuit. Moving on, we don't see the tracks because they are on the other side. We have here the positive, and here we come out of the other side of the diode. This is the fifth diode, transistor and fifth diode here, we can see them. It's a little dark, I'm going to put on the light. Here we have the diode, and here we have the transistor. I'm going to zoom in a bit to see it better. Rectifier, transistor and fifth diode. This IPM component, we haven't analyzed yet. Now, how are we going to make measurements on these components? We must remember that here we go towards the positive of the capacitors, around we have the negative and in the middle are the positives. From the diode we go to the positive, here we have the active PFC circuit. How are we going to measure these components? We will even be able to measure how it is detecting at this checkpoint the sinusoidal wave. For all these measurements, please pay attention to what I will be showing you. We will see it from here. This is how you measure a transistor. You place a multimeter in resistance and measure between positive and negative, and a transistor's resistance must be in megaohms, as we can see here several megaohms, five or more. It is measured between positive and negative of MOSFET transistor or where short circuit occurs. A resistance similar to what we found in switched source switch. We continue advancing, Make that measurement and I'll let you continue with video. To control a diode is simple because you already know how a diode works. It lets electrons pass one way but not another. This way you control PFC diode for one side lets pass and for other no. Voltage drop is lower because it is a diode that handles more amperage, so internal components, so to speak, are larger and let electrons pass a little more so voltage drop is higher than 1 in 4007, you remember first classes, so its operation is controlled. If they are defective dissipator is removed, with these screws, and see what code component has, they are super fast high amperage diodes and other one is high amperage MOSFET transistor, so you have to get exactly same good thing they get. As you could see this is how it's controlled. Look with oscilloscope, how it oscillates at that checkpoint, or how we can see that circuit working with motor off, can see it oscillating approximately at 100 hertz, which is number of times it crosses zero. Advancing the video, 
We will see when the motor starts to work, that's when it activates and starts to indicate at what moments to create that short circuit. There we can see that the PFC circuit is working well. This is also handled by PWM, it is always handled by pulse width. So this is what you will detect if you do a checkpoint on that third terminal of the MOSFET. There you will see a frequency of 100 and when the motor turns on which is when that PFC has to be activated, there is when you will see a square PWM wave, which creates that short circuit to adjust the power factor. This is how it works. It is interesting to understand how it works, why, it is difficult to detect when this circuit fails, it is difficult to say, well the problem is the PFC, one blames anything, the voltage, the motor, the IPM, which is what most people know, but this PFC circuit is there and also tends to fail. Here we can see, on a carrier board with the reactor mounted on the board, you are seeing the rectifier. The transistor is Q, this one. And the one with the letter D is the diode. Detect that there is always some low value resistance that works as a fuse. These are low value resistances that let electrons pass through. There is always some resistance like this placed in these areas as a fuse so keep that in mind. Excellent, so far we have advanced quite a bit. One last detail, on certain electronic boards such as LG, there is no active PFC. As there is no active PFC, they place a reactor, to correct power factor a bit, and place it here, on alternating current at input. Keep in mind that detail if you don't see active PFC, for example on this LG board I'm going to show you now. If you don't see the active PFC, it's not there because there is only a rectifier and IPM. In this case, they place it on alternating current, there's where they place reactor. Here's where reactor is plugged in. It's placed before. Anyway, there won't be any active PFC that has to control anything. Keep in mind that detail, they place an approximate and let whatever happens happen. Different from other board we were measuring that places reactor checks how it works and with active finishes adjusting but parameters are same always have to check they are in good condition and if those welds have been damaged redo them. In case reactor is mounted on board, it's very difficult for it to fail. It's very rare like in case of carrier or mirage. Span class equals QL cursor. So far we've been looking at reactor, talked about whole PFC circuit, and will continue advancing with stages of electronic board slash span.